translation of the Tanakh by Yonatan ben Uziel and later on in the Gemara. So I want to deal and explain first of all in the first half an hour the secret of the Nevi'im about, uh, about, we'll see, so the, this is the first half an hour. Then after that secret of the Nevi'im we'll move on to 20 minutes and talking about how Rav Kook took this secret and, uh, and built all his hesped after Herzl and uh, built in the, in the religious Zionist uh, society, I don't want to say movement and not party, but the religious, the religious Zionist society over the world he built the, the concept of combination between kohot, between a, between a, it's not powers, but it's a, it's a forces, 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 to that, forces of of uh, of views built the society. So he built this concept from the secret of the Nevi'im, and I will take that in the the second. Uh, uh, second part of the shiur. Third one will be, you know, if it's half an hour and 20 minutes, then we'll take uh, 10 minutes about the, about the very present uh, situation that we are now uh, in the Religious Zionist Party and uh, what's happened with this uh, concept that the group built in a very, very uh, actual and, and uh, relevant uh, situation. That will be another 10 minutes. And then we'll open it to your reactions. And if we all permit, we'll, we'll finish this journey, I, uh, the, the fifth part will be the pizza in the end. <laughs> so, so the, fair, fair enough. So the, okay. So let's start just limut. You know, after the first half an hour, you can leave. <laughs> just limut without any anything except limut Torah. So that's a, they ask if you after that shiur you can bless Bilkata Torah. So the first half an hour clearly it's Torah. So then, starting with the with the Navi Yechezkel, the prophet, who gave us. Uh, one of, of the symbols, chapter 37 in Sefer Yechezkel. You know that chapter from the Haftarah of Parashat Vayigash. Parashat Vayigash, if you remember, in Sefer Bereshit, relationship or the beginning with the standing between Yosef and Yehuda. It's like a fighting or debate between Yosef and Yehuda. And this is the reason that Chazal decided to bring this parak, this chapter of Yechezkel, the prophet, to this sedra, Vayigash. Now what he said there, Vakach lecha ben adam, you see in the Psukim, Vata ben adam, kach lecha etz echad, uchtov alav li Yehuda, veli bnei Yisrael chaveraf. ולקח עץ אחד, וכתוב עליו ליוסף עץ אפרים וכל בית ישראל חבריו, וקרב אותם אחד אל אחד לך לעץ אחד, והיו לאחדים בידיך. I will stop here, and instead asking you to translate this פסוקים, I will share with you a short story that happened to me many years ago, it was the uh, year 79, 
79, first year in the yeshiva in Gush Etzion, summer 79 or, or winter 79, or, 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 or maybe before the winter. A few chevre sitting in Bet Midrash was a, a you know, noon time, the Bet Midrash was empty after, after lunch, and suddenly Rav Amital came inside the Bet Midrash and said to the few students who spent time there, say, Bo, Bo, come, come. So the Rosh Hashiva said, we jump on and went, and he said, I want you to go to this class. I have a guest, and I want him to share with you his, uh, his uh, learning. It was terrible because it was free time. But what you say, what you can do? So we went to the kita. It was about ten people, not more. And uh, then someone came inside. It was with the head, not with the. I thought that he is secular, not that he. Very short, very. He was old man. It was terrible for us, you know. To, to, it was a uh, much the time that we were. So then he said to us, uh, uh, would you like to open? Oi? Oi? Would you like to open the Tanakh, please? Yechezkel, chapter 37. Maybe it was Parashat Vaigash, I don't know. So we opened. And then he read these two psukim. Ata ben adam, kach lecha etz echad, uchtov alav li Yehuda. And then this man asked us, can someone explain what we just read? It was so boring. But it's Hebrew. It's Hebrew. You understand Hebrew? We Israelis, we are 18 years old, we are adult, we, are, we know everything. What was supposed to answer? Pshat. Kach lecha etz, kach lecha etz. And make them a shita, you know. We, we learned in, in Bnei Akiva, you know, to, to do in Machanot, in, in the summer. You know, you take uh, woods and then you, 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 you link them and say that. It's so mishamem, it's boring because every poor prayer, all the Nevi'im, Spoke about Am Israel, Am Echad. So take yourself, take Yehuda, make a shidduch, shalom shalom b'mumab. It's so nevoah, boring. And this small man, the old man, asked us quietly, very quiet, said, "Can you explain me, ma perush amila etz? What is the word etz?" It was the end of the show. No? <laughs> ma etz, ma riboy neshiloy, ma atarotzi. So etz, etz, ma. So no, no. May I explain it? In the lashon, in the language of the Bible, etz mean tree in the land. Just when it's life. When, when it's alive, it's called etz. When you cut it, it's become not etz anymore, but it's wood, the keresh. Tree, the etz, and keresh, it's wood. So if the Tanakh used the word etz, mean that this tree is still alive. It's not just taking woods and collect them and link them. No. It's talking about trees. Now this man said, can you explain me what's happened here? How can I take a tree and another tree alive? Two, dif two different trees. How, what is the kunz? What is this? How you do that? And we, we didn't know. And this man explained us first time the secret of what we call in Hebrew harkava. Harkava to take two, two parts 
of a tree grow. One, one tree with the ability of taking the roots strongly to the land, without fruits, just the koach, the option of going down, down with the roots and, and keep itself, the, the tree, strongly in the land. This is, in Hebrew, a beautiful word called kana, kaf nun hei, kana. It's the part of the tree without fruits, just the part who going strongly to the land. Kana. We used to say it in Tehilim, in Haggadah Shel Pesach. Karev Yom. Karev Yom. Remember the, the, the shir? Karev Yom. Maher Nahel Nit Ei Kana. We all say Chana. It's Maher Nahel Nit Ei Kana. Duim Letzion Berina. The Kana is the part of the tree without talking about the fruits. Just about, just about the part going strongly to be, to be in the land. The other part, the other tree, is tree with the, gene with, with the option genetically to bring beautiful sweet fruits, but have no koach to, to, to stay in the land. That in Hebrew called rochev, meaning he's on the other side of the tree, and he, they have the ability to bring fruits, but he needs someone to help him to, to establish on, on the land. So the combination between these two trees, it's mamash, it's like a miracle that you take a branch from one, from the, from the rochev, from the other side, and put it inside the tree that have the ability to go to the, with the roots, the kana. And then, later on, you have one tree with both uh, 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 options. The fruits with, 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 a, with strongly standing in the land. This is the Harkava. This man named <coughs> Noga Areuveni. Noga Areuveni was the one who established Neot uh, Kdumim. He was a friend of Rafa Mital. Not a religious man, but knew Tanakh by heart, and he wrote a lot about the the, the, the trees, about the, the the animals in Eretz Israel according to the Tanakh days. So he gave the shiur for me, 18 years old, year 79, I mean 40 years ago, he gave me the shiur about Har Kava, about the combination of the trees in Sefer Yechezkel. Okay. Now combination between who and who. So according to Yechezkel, the prophet is taking Yosef and put on him Yehuda. These two tribes, Yosef and Yehuda, should <coughs> be not two tribes, but should combine them to be one. Now why the secret of the, of the Navi? Because Yechezkel was in the time of the destruction of the temple. He moved to Bavet, to Babylon. <coughs> and after, after the destruction, chapter 37, it's later on, after the destruction, he looked back and said, we need to do it differently. If we want to build again the nation, the Jewish people or, or the Israelis, the tribes, back to Eretz Israel, back to Jerusalem, back to build something, we cannot do it just like we did it before. We should do it differently. And his shita, his system was, take the tribes and bring each one of them, should, be, should bring his koach, his power, his energy, his uh, positive way side, should bring and combine them to be one. And he, by symbol, he brought the idea of the trees, Arkavat Ilanot. That was Yechezkel. Yechezkel had students. One of his Talmidim, of Yechezkel the prophet, was the prophet named Zechariah, who moved after the declaration of Koresh, moved to Eretz Israel, 
with the, the, first, uh, uh, the yeah. first chief to, who uh, went to Israel, with uh, Yoshua Kohen Gadol, with uh, Zerubavel, Chagai and Zechariah, two prophets, moved to Eretz Israel. And when you read the words of, of Zechariah the prophet, one of the end Nevi'im, he spoke about many, many uh, chapters about the Geulah, about the, what, hap what will happen in Eretz Israel when the whole truth will come. But then one small, small chapter, he said something that truly, truly, in his time and later on, for years, for years, no one understood what he said. It's like a, like not just a secret, like a poem that no one understood what the, what the prophet said. So you have these three lines of his nevuah. The shafachti al bet David ve'al yoshev Yerushalayim ruach chen v'tachanunim v'ibitu elai et asher dakaru v'safdu alav k'misped al ayachid v'hemar alav k'hamer al bechor I will not explain that it's, it's uh, like Chinese. It's so hard words in Hebrew. So to think about English, no way. Just, I give up the first pasuk. Second one. Bayomahu, <laughs> in that day, meaning the future, in the, that day, Bayomahu, Yigdal hamispet beYerushalayim kemispet hadad rimon bevikat megidon vesavta aref. One day will come, it will happen that we'll find ourselves with a huge aspect about someone, one, someone, individual, a huge name, someone well known, Misped Yerushalayim. It will be like the Misped of Hadad Rimon Bevikat Megidon. So, if you don't understand, feel comfortable. No one understood that. Hadad rimon bevikat me. It's not in Yiddish. It's not in German. It's not in any language. He, he, he created words. No one understood what he said. Hadad rimon bevikat Strangely, no one understood that. Until the days of the one who took responsibility to translate the whole Tanakh, or the whole prophets, Nevi'im, to Aramaic. Mean Yonatan ben Uziel. Now, Yonatan ben Uziel, according to the history, it's just about, let's say, 500 years after Zechariah. Just about 500 years later, he came. I will say it first full by heart. He said, what is exactly Hadad Rimon and Megidon? Like a, it's something that happened in the Jewish history or in the Israeli history that they need to collect them. And then he decided, Zechariah, a uh, Yonatan, sorry, Yonatan to explain, to translate the idea of, of the prophet and said, I will tell you this, the story. In the memory of the Israelis in the Bible time period, we had two kinds of kings, both of them very unique, but in the spectrum of, uh, of the chashivut, of the uh, uh, portent of the, of the kingdom, the two kinds of kings were the opposite. One named Achav, and the other named Yoshiyahu. Mm -hmm. Now I will take two seconds for each to explain why it's the whole spectrum. Start with Achav. If I will ask Kachachidon Tanach, what our, the Jewish people, our memory about Achav? If we need to say, let's give him a number between zero and ten. So the Kama Tziyun, what is the, 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 what the, what number you will give to Achav, the king of Israel? Zero. Zero, why? 
because he was a pushtak, he was a was a Oved Avoda Zara. His wife is able to brought the Lilim from the of their Ban Mitzidon from from Lebanon. Nachon Eliyahu Navi said about him, Ocher Israel, he is the enemy, the enemy. Nachon. Okay, can you say something more? He was the another Jewish king, but as a king for the people. First of all, he wasn't Jewish because he was Israeli. In the time of Fachaf, we should remember the Israelis live in Israel and not in Judea. It was the days that we talked about two states for two nations: <laughs> Israel and the Yehuda, two states completely different. Each one kept himself, each one with his own ki kingdom, each one with his own temples, each one alone. It wasn't one nation, it was two nations. Ahab was the king of Israel. And he was, if I need to say number between zero and ten, so according to the kingdom, I think that it was ten. Ten. Mean. How, how I count that? He took care. First of all, he took care about the people. We know that. When Eliyahu brought, you know, the three years of, uh, of uh, Ra'av Ba'aretz without raining, the king left his, his, uh, his uh, castle or his uh, temple, went around to look after water. If you learn the history, not the Tanakh, but from the, from the memories of the world, the Assyrian memories, we know that he brought or he, he created army, the biggest army in the Middle East. He was so strong. We count, I think, 2,000 Merkavot. I mean, it's unbelievable. One of the, of the stronger, strongest kings in the area. He was a diplomat, according relationship with all nations around. He dealt with them excellent, include relationship with Judea. He married his son to the Judea, or his daughter to the Judea uh, uh, king's son. He made Yechassim relationship with all nations around. So according to the economy, he was the best. According the the, the the bitachon security was the best. According the the uh, uh, foreign minister was the best. According all aspects of kingdom, he was the best king. If you learn about his death, it's unbelievable story. <coughs> During the war, stood on his merkava uh, what's the chariot? Chariot. He stood on. And the blood go down and down, but he said to his driver, keep me, because the chayarim, the soldiers, need to see me stand. If they will see me fell down, they will fall. He stood all day until the evening, like that. And that was that the way that he passed away. Like a king. He is the it's unbelievable king. Behemet, just you, you think about him. And you think about proud, you want king like, you, you definitely want king like Ahab. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> someone argue with me. <laughs> you know who argue with me? The Mishnah. The Mishnah Masechet Sanhedrin said, Three kings have no part in Olam Abba. One of them is Achav. Rasha <laughs> Merusha. So what is the truth? The answer is... Both? No, it's... it's <laughs> actually, of course, it's Machloket, but it's not Machloket. <laughs> but it's... Toda Rabba and Slicha. It's not Machloket, but it's too... too Two uh, ways to look to the person, to the to the to the uh, to the pe person to the king. You check him according the 
values of religion, or you check him with the with the with the eyes of Kimpton. So it's a, no, not impossible. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a half. This is a half. Let's talk two minutes about Yoshiyahu, Melech Yehuda. Again, very shortly. Yoshiyahu was the grandchild of Menashe. Menashe, it's about, about 200 years later after Achav. Very many years. Was the, almost the end of Judea. His grandfather, 55 years king, Menashe, built Yerushalayim like Assyrian. Everything was without any Jews, uh, uh, not, not synagogues, not temple, not fila, not Torah, nothing at all. It was like, exactly like uh, Ashur. That was Judea. Jerusalem without any, any, anything, anything. When the grandchild came, Yoshiyahu, he made a revolution, brought the people back to the Torah. It was unbelievable. He, if I remember correctly, 17 years as a king, he changed the culture in Judea, brought the people back to the Torah, back to the mitzvot, back to Avodat Hashem, back to the temple. It was a revolution of Avodat Hashem. If we are checking Yoshiyahu with the view of Avodat Hashem, of religion, he was the best, number one. Number one without any question. Any question. When you check him according to the kingdom, according to everything, according to relationship with the people, with the nations, about economy, about uh, understanding the position of a king, you know how he passed away? Accidentally, he tried to stop the king of Egypt in his way north to help the Assyrian in the war against the Babylon. Mean the empires, empires fight each other, and this king of Jerusalem went to Megiddo, stood there, and said, Ich bin du, Ich bin du, Israel. The king of Egypt, Paron Echo his name. I said, excuse me, what are you doing here? <laughs> no, this is my place. No, your place is Yerushalayim. I am in Megiddo. This is 02, this is 08, you know, it's not the same code. What are you supposed to do here? I, said, I am the king of the whole tribes now. So, when we grew up in Bnei Akiva, we used to play Megiddo uh, about the war. Hamilchama, that Yoshiyahu against Paro, Shtuyot, Shtuyot. It wasn't any war. The king of Egypt asked his, uh, one of his soldiers, please open the, the path for me. So he sent him one, you know, Chetzechad, killed him immediately, and then he continued on. This is the way that Yoshiyahu passed away. Mm. Nebish. We called it in Hebrew, Shimshon the Nebuch Because you are not so strong. You are just the Melech of Yerushalayim. You are not in Pyro. This is Yoshiyahu. So what? Between zero and ten. How, how much we give to Yoshiyahu? In the aspect of religion, ten. In the aspect of kingdom, zero. Now the Kuts of Zechariah and maybe his teacher, Yechezkel. המספד של זכריה הדד רימון בבקעת מגידוני. The combination should be between אחאב, who passed away, killed in, with the king of Aram, of Syria, <coughs> called הדד רימון, בבקעת מגידון, the place that Yoshiyahu passed away. <coughs> so the husband will be for these two kings, like one man. I want to make the combination, the Herkava, like the trees, to take the power of Yoshiyahu and put it on the power of Achav. Use the Koach, the positive power, both of them, 
and to build the new kingdom of Am Israel, we cannot build it just with one of them. If you take just the Ruach, the spiritual side of, of, uh, of Judea, of Yoshiyahu, you can go and say the healing, but you will stay it. If you will take the Achav power, the Koach of the, of the kingdom, of the whole Bemet power of, 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 of leadership, you will have a strong state without spirit, without Kesher, without Kesher to Hashem. You must make the combination between Yoshiyahu and Achav. This is Hadad Rimon Bevikat Megidon that Zechariah gave. Yonatan ben Uziel explained that. And then we understand also the Harkava, the combination that his teacher said, Yehuda and Yosef. Because Yehuda is Yoshiyahu, Yosef is Achav. That was almost half an hour, Shi'ur Tanakh, and the secret of the prophets. So that until here, now we can jump on to the next step. Is so there any question about that? Efo Yonatan ben Uziel. I brought the I brought the Gemara in Megillah. Yeah. So that you can see that. Amar of Yosef, in Sefer Zechariah you bet. Open Yonatan, you will see that. He said, we spent Hadad Rimon Bevikat Megidon. So he said, we spent the Achav Bar Omri, the Katal Yadei Hadad Rimon, and Yoshiyahu, the Katal Yadei Paro. Clearly in the in the Targum. Yes, but Targum Yonatan Ben Yosiel. Zechariah Yibe, he opened the Targum. But what he what he Yonatan is pseudo Yonatan. Never mind. It's hundred years after the prophet, hundred years before you and me. <laughs> it's never, you can say it's Moshe Zuchmir, you can say it. We are not academy now saying exactly who was Yonatan. Who cares? Rav Yosef Gankin Tirgeim. No, surely Rav Yosef was one of the sages in the Gemara. Mm -hmm. For him, it was a fact. said, I know the secret because I read the Targum. Okay? So, you can be sure that in the third century, mm -hmm. the days of, of Yosef in Babel, he knew the explanation by the Targum. Now, this is a fact. Now, exactly when the translation <coughs> came, actually, I don't know, and I don't care. No, I, I know that for years no one understood, and I know that for of Yosef it was shocked. So now, because the Targum, I understand what's happened. And between you and me, something unbelievable, it will move me to the second part. Mm -hmm. For years, people learn Gemara. Mm -hmm. The Horn of Yosef, it's not a secret that I found, you know, in the, in the Gniza. No, it's, it's, it's printing in the Gemara, and mean that for the third century, mean 1,700 years, from then to now, people learn Gemara. Mm -hmm. And they learn about Hadad Rimon, Megidon, Yoshia, Wachav. And in the end, when they end learning, what they do, what they did, is Gadda Vizkada Shmi Rabo. The effect was nothing. They just learned to say Shkoyach and continue on. If you open the Mefarshim, the whole interpretation of the Gemara Masechet Megillah, just you know, uh, uh, practice before Purim. So, uh, so read that Gemara, look over around all the Mefarshim in the Gemara, you see, Shtiyot, okay, Adadrimon, Begidon, Yoshia, Wachav, well, who cares? It's not so interesting. Then the second part of our Shi'ur is what happened when Theodor Herzl, Bin Yom Zev, Herzl passed away. Year 1904. Okay, 1904. Passed away Tammuz, Kaf Tammuz, Taf Reish Samech Dalet. This is the yard side of Herzl. Suddenly, what's happened was that, you know, the Datiim didn't like Herzl so much. Let's say it like that. It's sort of politically correct to say, they didn't like him so much. He wasn't part of Moetz and Dolei Torah. Two months before that, two months, 
before Herzl passed away, a young rabbi made Aliyah, came to Israel, and got a job to be the rabbi of Jaffa in the area. His name is Avram Yitzchak Kuk. Okay. <laughs> Who heard about him? Few people. Avram Yitzchak Akohen Kuk, very young man, came and be the rabbi of Jaffa. Two months later, Herzl passed away, and the whole uh, the, the committee of Jaffa, all secular, all Zionist movement uh, people, they came to the rabbi, officially rabbi, and said, we are doing an event in the circle of Jaffa, uh, the, the, mean the, 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 the leaders of the area, and you as a rabbi, we, we ask you to say his prayer to Herzl. <laughs> what is supposed to do? You know, it's Hebrew from, from uh, the old, you know, uh, Yeshua Yashan from Jerusalem. Or well, they, they did this, they say, Halel when Herzl passed away. <laughs> what, is, what is supposed to do? Now he, he stood and spoke, and then he wrote his spirit. The title, you can find it in the internet, I believe that it translates to other languages. The, the Hebrew name of that Esped is Hamisped Beyerushalayim. This is the title. Just go to the Google and, and write just the word Hamisped Beyerushalayim and you will have the whole text, the whole text. I don't know who understood the Esped when Rab Kook stood there and spoke. No one can understand that. I don't know how, how, how long time it took to say this is a beautiful one. It's like a manifest of the religious Zionists all over the history. I will say it shortly, okay? Because I promise you that part will be take 20 minutes. But the concept you understand. He started with the secret of the Nevi'im. He started with the, with the idea of Hadad Rimon Bevikat Megiddon, Achav and Yoshiyahu. He gave all this to you, okay? He started with that, so you are, you are on already, see there? And then he brought another idea. The new idea was that when Am Israel waiting to the Mashiach, actually we are not waiting to uh, one Mashiach, we believe that we'll have two Meshichim. We will have two, not one. One will come from Yosef, and the other will come from Yehuda. Mashiach ben Yosef, Mashiach ben David. Now, this idea, it's an old and very, very deep idea, starting in the Gemara days, later on in the Kabbalah, later on, the whole roots of idea of two Meshichim, Yosef and, and, and David. Mashiach ben Yosef, Mashiach ben David. If you remember the Gemara, spoken about Yehovam and David, walking together with Hashem. Beautiful picture. Why it why it's uh, didn't work? When Hashem invited Yehovam, the king of Israel, walking to Gan Eden with David, together. And Hashem between. Beautiful picture, Nachon. Why, why, why it's... Uh, no. No. Yehovam said, I just want to know who is, with the, who is the, the number one and who is number two. <laughs> and Hashem said, David is, is in front. So Yehovam said, okay, no. <laughs> no, I can't think about uh, all of that. Uh, who is number one, who is number two? He was said, uh, no thank you, and he left himself outside. Okay. Now, came, came Rav Kook, spoke about Yoshiao and Achav, spoke about Yosef and Yehuda, about the combination of the three, and then he spoke about Herzl, that brought to Am Israel the power of Yosef of the, of the uh, ability of moving the people, the Jewish people, not just from tribes, but from their whole individual life in the communities around the world, to collect them and make them happen like a state in their own land. 
מדינת היהודים. The idea of be the one, the Kana, the one who have the power to go and take the roots inside the state, the, the land. I brought here a short part in the other side of the page. If you want just to listen to the music, the words of Rav Kook. Okay, just to listen to the music of Rav Kook. I know it's Hebrew and it's a poem Hebrew, it's hard, but for one second it will take very short. והנה התכונה של החיבה הלאומית נתגלתה באחאב שחיבב מאוד את ישראל. אחז מעשה אבותיו אומרי שהוסיף עיר אחת בארץ ישראל. ודורשי רשומות אמרו כולם באים לחיי עולם הבא. לי גלעד זה אחאב שנפל בגלעד. שהיה מעמיד פנים במלחמה גם אחר שניחתו בו החיצים כדי שלא להבעיט את ישראל. אומץ רוח כזה בא מאהבה יתרה ונפלאה כי כיבד את התורה על כל פנים שמר את כבוד האומה כלפי חוץ לפני בני, בן הדת ועם כל זה לא הכיר ערכה של תורה וקדושת השם יתברך המיוחדת שבה כל יתרונם של ישראל על כן הלך בדרכי זבל ובחוקות התועבות של גוי הארץ לפי המידה שהייתה שולטת אז ברוח הזמן הצייד כאן הוא אומר, אחאב was a so strong uh, uh, king and we can see the power, we can see that he was באמת כבוד, the, 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 not just respect to him, but it's honor to the people that they had a king like him. But inside we remember that he left Hashem. He didn't work, he, he, he brought Avodah Zara, but he said, He brought it because it was the zeitgeist. לפי שהמידה שהייתה שולטת אז ברוח הזמן, he said Rav Kook to about Achav, it wasn't his guilty. It just was part of the, of the ruach, of the atmosphere, of the culture around, all around. They all work like that. רוח הזמן, it's ממש the zeitgeist. So that was a half. Other side, Yoshiyahu, he gbir et at sada ruchani, at en dome bechol ha-melachim, ka katub, kmo to lo haya lefanav melech asher shav el Hashem, bechol levavo, bechol nafsho, bechol meodo, at shelo ratza kla liot yachas Yisrael im umot ha-olam. He canceled the whole relationship between Israel and the other nations. I'm Levadad. He was so strong with the belief that we are different, that we are superb, that we are Am Yisrael with Hashem, that he didn't care about the whole relationship, all the all, all diplomats are, no, nothing. Just about it. Ubeze viter al divrei Yirmiyahu Anavi. When he stopped the Egyptians to move, it was against the <coughs> Jeremiah, the prophet. Jeremiah said to him, leave. It's not your business. But he thought, I am here, no one will, will, will move here. Al Ken, now we go to the point. Be'achav ve'yoshiyahu itkansu shtei ha'nekudot shel Yosef ve'shel Yehuda. Koach Mashiach bet Yosef u'bet David. Al Ken be'asarat ha'ivut ha'ba me'chesron ha'chanat ha'uma. Shelo tishtamesh be'kochotea ha'mitgalim be'yichidei sgula le'tovah ka'raui. לעת קץ הכיר כי היה אפשר לאחד שני הכוחות יחד בהיות ההכרה שלמה. אוקיי, okay, then continue on, that is the, the concept of building the new system of עם ישראל, make the combination between the כוח of אחאב, כוח of יאשיהו, עם אחד בארץ. And Herzl for him, now I should say, I believe that it took not less than half an hour to him to make this aspect. He didn't mention even one time the name of Herzl. The whole aspect is about Herzl without using the name of Herzl. You can look, Lama, because he couldn't. Herzl in the Haredi world was the enemy. To stand 
and speak about Herzl positively was far away. To use his name, it was not legitimate. The Haredi, Mamash, it was the first step of Rav Kook in Israel. That was the first time the Haredi met not just argue against him, but fight and make machine. You said about Herzl that he is Mashiach. <laughs> now he said Mashiach ben Yosef, and then Mashiach ben David. Now the truth, okay? No one understood clearly what Rav Kook tried to say. Both sides, the Haredi world and the Chiloni world, argue about this aspect. The Chiloni said, do you mean that we are the platform, we, the, Ch the Chiloni, the Tzionut, the secular movement, we are the platform for your dreams, Chamorim. for Chamorim, like a donkeys. You put uh, your, your heritage of Torah, you put on our back, and we will build the country, we will build the state, we will build the army, we will build the economy, we will build the, the relationship with the whole nation around, we will be the established of the state, and then later on, you will come with your Torah and throw us out. We are just a platform. That was the reaction of the Chiloni. The, the, the very angered. If you, can, you can find the book, the title of the book, Chamoor Shel Mashiach, the donkey of the Mashiach. A man, I should say scholar, wrote this book against Rav Kook that say that we are the donkeys, Chamorosh and Mashiach. We are empty. The other side, the Haredi world, said, Mashiach, you said about Herzl, the Kofer, you said about him, you gave him the legitimate to say you are part of the Geula, the redemption? You want to combine our dream with him? Never. The Mashiach will come just by bracha, blessing of Hashem, not with uh, such people. We're not allowed to do this combination. Chas v'chalila. Treif, treif, treif. That was two voices reacted to Rav Kuk uh, uh, but Rav Kook Hesped came much directly from the voices of the Nevi'im with translation of the it, You can see the, 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 the whole structure. How he did that. Now, I want to share, okay, that was another 20, now I have 10 minutes. <laughs> you understand that originally, the Tzionut, the, I'm in the third part now, if you didn't understand. <laughs> okay. Originally, that Zionut, that is a religious Zionist in Israel, they came from different sides. Some of you remember that Rav Kook wasn't the central side of religious Zionists. The Mizrahi, okay, the old Mizrahi from Europe, wasn't part of Rav Kook. No. They grew up with Rav Reines, they grew up with other rabbis or with other <coughs> rabbis. But the idea was to combine the, let's say, the modernity with the Masoret, with the tradition. That was the concept. Without talking to so much about Mashiach, without talking about redemption, they talking about the state, positively with the Sionut movement, very positive, the Mizrahi, should know Mizrahi was the first religious who, who, who jumped on the Zionist movement and say we are part. We are part. We are the Dati in the Zionist movement. Rav Kook, as an individual, refused to be part of the Zionist movement. He wasn't. He said the Zionist movement is Chiloni. The basic, the DNA of, of the Zionist movement, it grew up with, with, with values that I cannot accept. I want to build a new organization. The organization of me will call it Degel Yerushalayim, the flag of Jerusalem. And he wrote, Mamash, he wrote a, a whole dream. How will the 
the new organization will build the state. Begel Yerushalayim. Nothing happened with that. His son, Harav Tzvi Yehuda Kuk, became part of the Tzunut movement because he understood that there are no other way. Bnei Akiva was the organization that took Rav Kuk as a leader and put him as a figure what called the Ayu Einecha Ho'ot Et Morecha, the head teacher of the religious Zionists started with Bnei Akiva in Israel. And for years, for years I mean not less than 60 years, maybe 70 years, the whole, the whole Bnei Akiva Hebre in Israel, I mean the religious Zionists, I mean the Apoel Mizrahi in Israel, grew up with the image of Rav Kuk. No one cared about the Zionut movement, the Yerushalayim movement, no one cared about it. Rav Kook was uh, strongly, positively about the Tzionut, strongly about Torah, strongly about Eretz Israel, and we are in Stalmitim. That was the concept. When you understand that, you look now, I, I, I will not talk mamash uh, about parties, uh, but just, I use the names, so the, the old Mafdal, Religious Zionist Party. The old one. You remember the names of Yosef Bug and Ham, all these old names. They didn't grow up in the yeshiva of Rav Kuk. Paul Mizrahi, the old Paul Mizrahi, was part from Germany, Yekish, part from East Europe, part, but they grew up with the concept of Mizrahi and Apoel Mizrahi. That was the old Mafdal. The old Mafdal. Later on, <coughs> to that uh, party, the, the, the Talmidim of Rav Kook came inside with the ideas of Rav Kook. Now, ideas of Rav Kook, it's huge, because they, by themselves, split off to few options. The big example is, if you know, Rav Kook had one big yeshiva. Yeshivat Merkaz Harav. <coughs> Actually, in his life, it was a very small yeshiva. Later on, it's become the central yeshiva of the religious Zionist movement. Yeshivat Merkaz Harav. In the 80s, this yeshiva split to two yeshivot. Why? Because they flocked inside the yeshiva between, after the Tzviyuda, the son of Kuk, they split to two yeshivot. One follow the step of the concept of, of Tzviyuda that we need to be levadat. Levadat means to take the Torah just purely from the Torah and none, none ideas from the outside world, either mean the academy, I uh, mean from, from, a, from a psychology, from history, from, from a, a criticism of, of learning, nothing should come to the yeshiva. It should be a very, very close yeshiva with Torah, purely Torah of Rav Kuk. That was the yeshiva, we called it Har Hamor. The other yeshiva, Merkaz Rav, said, of course, we want yeshiva, strong yeshiva, but we want to prepare our students to be teachers, or to be, so we allow them to learn, in addition, some other studies. That was the machloket. But thinking about the relationship with the Harav Kuk and the Tzionut movement, they are different between these two partners. It was somehow, it was another combination of take a branch, Rav Kuk as a branch, and put him inside the tree of the Mizrahi. It was another Arkava. When you come to the relationship between the Dati and the secular in Israel, suddenly you find yourself in a dilemma, a big dilemma. Because the original Tzionut Dati from the Mizrahi strongly believe that we need to be part of the whole concept of the Tzionut. Mean we are part not just officially. We are part by learning. We are part by going to the academy. We are part by uh, opening ourselves to values in the Western world. And if we are talking about a state, talking about uh, building Israel 
as a strong state, the Tzionut from Mizrahi strongly, strongly believed by democracy. Democracy is the only way that we can build a state in, in, in our time. And if you remember Rav Herzog as an example, Rav Herzog was the chief rabbi, the first chief rabbi in Israel, and he was the one who wrote clearly that if we wish to have a state, it was before the time of Mendel, if we wish to have a state, we need to declare that this state will be a, a whole democracy, include, or maybe central idea, of the rights to the minorities. You're not allowed to be a state without equal right to all, all, uh, all, all uh, uh, citizens. Shivyon, citizens. you know, the equal right is a basic in democracy. And Rav, Rav Herzog said, I know that if we read Rambam and read other poskim, it's, comp it's complicated to speak about shivyon, about, uh, uh, about equal rights. Because you are a Jew and they are not. And so you are in a, in a problematic situation. So what Herzog said, I know. But my tafkid is to learn again Rambam and to explain him in the ambition of a, a democracy state. It should be, it must be a, a democracy state. When you read later on, Parshanim, in, I'm not talking about the Haredi world. Haredi world have no expect, expectations to speak about democracy. They want to be in the coalition, that's all. <laughs> Bement, strong, seriously. It was true in, the, in Poland, in the CM. It's true in Switzerland, it's true in France, it's true in all over the world. We want to be there because we need our needs. It's, it's a very self-expectation to keep our society. And in Israel, it's exactly the same. The Haredi have their own club, their own needs, their own yeshivot, their own buildings. They want to keep the people, and they want to be in the coalition. And they will pay for that. They will buy and pay. It's a business. It's a politician, mamash. There are no questions about that. But the religious Zionists have a different ambition. Religious Zionists want to bring something in the concept of Am Israel return back to Eretz Israel. And if you are Mizrahi, you want to be part of the Zionot. If you are of Cook, a, a, a student, you want to bring the Mashiach. And then you said, what exactly the tafkid of the other party? And can I be part of that? Do I allow to build a party Combine secular and religious together? Why not? Because what about Shabbat? If I want to have a, 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 a Jewish state, can I accept that everyone will do whatever he wants? In my, if I'm the leader, I'm the prime minister, I'm the, I'm the government, I'm, I'm the Jewish state, I'm the, the strongest party in the parliament. What are you supposed to vote with the business of Shabbat and the Kotel and all that question? If I want to be Dati, so my vote is I'll be a Torah. But if I am part of a combination of, of a human rights, of a liberal, of a open ideas in, without Dati, what are you supposed to do? That this is a big machloket in the religious Zionist movement. So you see now few parties in the parliament or working to, 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 the, to the electors that come very soon. You see the Yamin, okay, the right, called Hayamina Hadash. Yamina Hadash came from the religious Zionist party, moved to make a combination of a new party combined the Dati and the secular. And the concept is we want to keep Eretz Israel strong. Yamin. The idea about Dati, lo chashuv kokach. Chashuv Eretz Israel. 
the old Bait Yehudi found themselves like in a ghetto now, just dirty, without any, any option of open gate to a non dirty voices or candidates. We are just the team. We want to keep the Torah. We want to keep the, 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 the values of the Torah. And then you ask them, what about democracy? Do you care about democracy? So the answer will be, of course, without democracy we'll have no state. But then, because they wasn't sure that they will have enough numbers who vote for them, they found themselves in a dilemma because a small party, or maybe not small party, who have no interest about democracy values, just about Jewish state, they want to keep the Jewish life in Israel and to make the Yadut stronger. They want to go into the parliament as a party. Alone they can't. The Bait Yehudi, the religious Zionist alone, Safek. So they combine themselves now with a party that the democracy, they will play the game, of course, according to the law. But inside the ideas, we're talking about Jewish state, for example, about the rights of minorities. Of course, the deeply in that party, they don't care. We need to be the elite, Am Israel and the other, the minorities, <coughs> should be <coughs> maximum secondary. Now, when we talk about Achav the Yoshiao, okay, think about the Hesped of Earth. What we supposed to think of Cook will say about this combination? That you, you want to make a Brit, okay, to make a coalition as a one party, until you go inside the parliament and you accept the voices of the Dati, but the democracy, it's not the, it's not the, not just the, the, the priority, it's not must have there. You will, you will live with that. The other option is to be party mix the team and secular and say the democracy is so important for me, but the tea is less important. This is today, I'm not talking about the Haredi, two options that you have if you want to vote to a somehow religious Zionist movement. Mm -hmm. Of course, you have other options to say the whole parliament is option. But inside the religious Zionist movement, you are now in this situation. And I finished my 10 minutes of the third part. And now you can... Uh, Throw me a mamash. Excellent. To Atoms. Again, you're sure. Maybe for the people in. I understand what you're talking about. I think that Huck really thought that Ben Gurion is a letter day Achav. Is this true? It's very interesting. I think that, first of all, of Huck spoke about health. Yes, and it's interesting to say ben that I believe that without Ben Gurion, without Ben Gurion, we had nothing. This is the truth. No army, no relationship with the nations, no Megillat Asmaut, no Medinat Israel. So first of all, if I want to think about Medinat Israel, so Ben Gurion is my hero. Surely, surely. Ben Gurion was a fate. Atheist. You know that he put Mezuzah in his office, but he didn't put in his private home. He was a very strict person. He said, officially in Medinat Israel, I need to put Mezuzah. But in private home, it's my own business. And I don't, I don't believe that things. Ben Gurion was a very strong person. And very far, far, far from the Torah. Actually, he knew Tanakh by heart. For him, it was history of the Jewish people. He knew Tanakh, he learned Tanakh, he taught Tanakh, he talked about Tanakh. But he was so secular. Think about the whole, whole Zionist movement. 
If you take the concept of Achav, and say Achav was a hero, you cannot just say, Eno chalek laolam rabah. No, it's, it's wrong. Achav is a, a symbol of a king who cared, who did care about his nation. Why did Chazal condemn him? So what Rosh, you see what Rav Kook said, he brought another voice of Chazal, said, yes, no chalek laolam rabah. He, he brought another voice. They don't throw him out. Bring him in. It's it's mamash. It's it's the Miragesh. Understand that you can collect other voices speaking about Achav. Yes, luchelik And of course, Ben Gurion, and later on, and we can say even until today, until today, there are readers. You know, with we argue about readers, nachon. We know you can be, you can do so many criminals, you can do so many wrong things. You can, but in the end, I want to to, to, to count the good things that you did to your, your nation. The, you're proud with that. We cannot say, okaha, okaha. It's, it's the, the, the suba. It's complicated. Now, when we vote, we vote for one. But to say, shachor and lavan, <laughs> of course, I'd be careful about that. Yes, please. The one who understood that the best from the, his, the one who understood that the best from the history very, very, very uh, close to us is Hitler, because he knew that we are one. He took every one. He took every Jew from all generation, like five uh, generations ago. If you were dati, if you were not dati, there we were really united. How can how come can we understand that? How come can it be, not be such a positive force in us that say, whoever you are, Jew, you are Jew. If you're religious, if you're not religious, if you are a Talmud Torah, if you know Torah, if you know nothing, if you come from I don't well, know where, you, know, you are a Jew. How come respect, can't we to be united with but this? But let's, let's play it like that, or with full respect with your words. I'm a Jew and I want to collect all Jews because the Nazi, because all that, okay? Yeah. Now, I build a party in Israel that want to be a proud Jew. Proud Jew mean I want to stand and the enemies around should know that I will never give up. I'm here forever and if they will try to do something, I will be very aggressive. I will not let them you know, raise the, the head and I will collect the Jews. I will fight against the minorities. I will not let anyone, not from Sudan, not from Rwanda, not from anywhere to come inside. We are the Jewish people. Jewish land. And by that, we will be strong. We will be Am Chazak, Am Yehudi. Okay? And then you ask, and what about the Arabs, 20%? 20% in the citizens in Israel. Do you let them vote in the parliament? Chas v'chalila. The enemies. We will not let them. So you don't want democracy? What is your ambition? So it's very easy to speak about, we are the Jewish people, we, we, we solidarity each other, all voices, dati chiloni. But then you ask about democracy. And democracy was 20% non-Jews, Arabs, and include another thousands who came from Russian non-Jews, and another minorities around. Okay, but what if, is if, your, if they, if so they agree to go to I'm not talking about, about, about religious, not religious. It's okay, simple. It's if, too if simple. If they agree to go to the as Israeli army to fight no, for Israel... No, no. The Haredi also not go to the army. So this is... Your a, solidarity to if, the Haredi. If they would, if they but would... But you talk about Jewish, we want to respect all. No, but if you're talking now about democracy, okay? Yes. We're talking about democracy. So they will do Shavut Ezrahi, you know, they will serve somehow. No, it's no, useful. they have to do exactly the same rules. You do like exactly the same to the Haredi, you say exactly the same? Exactly. No, you're not. You're not. You understand the dilemma? It's easy to speak solidarity about the Jews. No, but if, they, if they follow the rules, the rules they are do, the same they for do. everyone. No, they 90, don't. They 90%. Don't. 
90% respect the, the, the law. They respect the, the shilton, the, the, the shilton of, the, of Israeli law. 90%. They are 10% terrorists. What we should supposed to do? I have a question. Would you put the democracy and the the, khiyuf, the duty to have a democracy, you would put the Ahav principle, I guess? Yes. Now, the thing is with the democracy today, I think the fight is not if to do it or not, but if it is protecting, because the Ahav principle is protecting the land, no matter how. The nation. The nation, yes. Now, I think the, the fight today is not, not to protect, but we have different ideas how to protect. I think this is the problem. It's like a, um, uh, a fight in the Ahav principle. First of all, it's a nice question. If I put the democracy value in the side of, or in the branch of Ahav, or in the a branch of Yoshia? It's a nice question. Because for me, democracy, the value, came from the Torah. Mean what? When I learn Torah, and I learn Sefer Dvarim, Hashem said to Moshe, Moshe said in Sefer Dvarim, one day you will be a state. One day. Now you are in a desert. You, your memory is a slave in, in Egypt, but one day you will walk up and will find yourself as a nation, nation but not just a nation, with the, with the koach, with the, with the freedom, and with responsibility to minorities around. So be careful, said Moshe, be careful, because you need to behave different than the Egyptian way behave to you. You need to be someone who take care to the minorities just like you. Kager, kachem Ger, according to the language of the Torah, it's not the one who convert from non-Jews to Jew. Ger, according to the language of the Torah, is the minority who live under your umbrella. It's Ger Toshab. This is Ger. And the Torah, Time after time, so many times said, be careful. Be careful, it's your responsibility because he is a human being. And when I'm thinking about democracy, first of all I think about liberal values. Liberal values mean kvoda adam, the image of God. When I'm talking about that, it's Yoshiyahu Achav. For me it's Yoshiyahu, it's Torah. And I believe that this is something positively lechatchila. It's not because I want a Jewish state and because the United Nations and because the effect that can happen, so never I will, uh, will take the democracy values. No. I think that this is in, in the present time, I should say, when I look around with the monarchy, with the dictator, with all kinds of, 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 kinds of states, I th thanks God that we are democracy. And I want to keep that according to the voice of the Torah. Now, about that, I'm arguing with the rabbis that said, no way. No, Torah and, and uh, equal rights are not going together. We are not giving the equal rights. It's a, this is mamash machloket, mamash machloket in the learning Torah today. And I know the majority rabbis in the Orthodox world will say that democracy is a half side. Mm -hmm. I know that. I refuse to take it as all one option. I believe that it's not true. And from, from what you say, I hear that um, diversity seems to be very important. <laughs> to make the, um, the metaphor of the tree, of combining two trees to one. So if you take two which are completely different, so they are going to reject one each other, it's not going to function. But if you could combine, it could come stronger. So maybe if you don't have diversity, you are weaker. So I, I hear it from your idea. And then my question is, how is it in Israel? Is it better to separate 
religion from state or not to separate in order to have a good diversity? First of all, we are not talking about uh, separate uh, state and church. We are talking about uh, separate church and politicians. It's different. Okay. Okay? I think that if we are talking about, for example, uh, the law who came from the Torah, what we call Chatikada, religion law, if you check it, according to the history, 70 years history of Israel, take the whole Chuki, all laws who built because the Torah, because the Dati parties, and see what the effect of them. Positively or negative? Example, okay? You're, we, according to the law in Israel, you're not allowed to sell chametz in Pesach. This is a law. Why? Because the Dati pushed that strongly and the, the, the secular didn't care and, and okay. So it's a law that you're not allowed to sell chametz. <laughs> First of all, if you're Arab, you allow. So all the Israelis go to Jaffa, to the Arabs, and buy a lechem in Pesach. But more than that, if you take a Yair Lapid as an example, okay? Yair Lapid said loudly a few years ago that until this law, it was clear in his family that they will never eat bread in Pesach. When the law came, it was clear that they will eat bread in Pesach. <laughs> because no one will tell them what to eat and not. <laughs> so this is one example. If Chas Vechalila, the Dati parties, will put a mamash kacha, a lachas, a pressure, and will bring a chok, a new law, that you're not allowed to drive in Yom Kippur. <coughs> You know, today, Yom Kippur in Israel, I don't know if you spend one Yom Nobody Kippur in Israel. Drives. It's unbelievable. It's just, un it's like a miracle. Just bicycles. It's bicycles. bicycles <laughs> but, they, but it's unbelievable. A whole country, all around, all around. It's quiet. You can feel in the air Yom Kippur. It's not, no one can dream about that Jewish state. If the law will come, it will break immediately, cars and buses and uh, I don't know what else will, will drive all over the, the country. So the law can make the, 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 the terrible effect. When we are talking about combine the branches, we need to be so careful about respect. Respect means understand the needs of other branch. Combine, it's always minimize yourself, always. You are not the only tree in this play. You are one branch, and you have another one, and minimize yourself. This is called the Kabbalic, the called Sod, Hatsinsum, shrink yourself. Make yourself minimize, let other put themselves, and then something good happen. Hashem maybe will find himself there. And I think that this is one of the dilemma when we are looking around and said about the language between parties. I am the only one. I am the only one. By being only one, you have no place to, not, not just to other uh, values or other options. You have, no one will accept yourself, will be there. And then you think about religious Zionism, think about Rav Kook, think about Herzl and Rav Kook, about this combination. You understand the tragedy. You understand that they dream about be a party who combine who make the branches all around and said, we have the power and take the energy each other, then you minimize yourself to be yourself and yourself with your own power and it's not so strong power. And, uh, and then just to survive, you collect voices from other world, religious, but far away from your own belief, just to be able to go back, to go, uh, to the parliament. At Suf, actually, it's very sad. More? It's enough? You want to go to the fifth part? Okay, pizza?